It's time for the spewing of symbolic equations, the drawing of free body diagrams, and the crying over the disgusting simple harmonic motion problem that are guaranteed to be on the tip. In other words, it's FMA 2020 time! So basically what I wanted to do in this video is just give you guys some last minute tips on how to take the test, what stuff you could do to make your friends up feel prepared, and how to not stress out about it. Well honestly, I have no idea how to not stress out about it, but honestly, it'll be fine. You guys studied for it? You guys will be fine? I believe in you. But you guys probably don't want my belief, you guys want some cold hard facts that'll help you on the test. So let's get into it. Hello everybody, I'm Karara and today we're just going to be talking about everything FMA related that'll help you at last minute tip before the actual test. So the test is coming up this Thursday and basically the way it goes down is this. You walk into the room, you bring first. You need a pencil, you need an eraser, and you need a calculator. That's it. Don't worry, you don't have to bring anything else, don't panic. That's all you gotta bring. Then basically, on your table, you'll have a turned over Scantron, turned over test booklet, and when they call time, you'll have one hour and 15 minutes to finish the test. So the test is 25 multiple choice questions, and it's scored really simply. It does one for every correct answer and zero for every incorrect. So, there's no penalty for guessing. Guess what that means? A, guess every single one of them. That's right. All right, see, not that bad. Just walk in, take the test, be chill about it, it's fun. So now for some actual tips. The first thing that you gotta do before the test is just review your basic equations and just memorize some basic concepts. So honestly, grinding problems just the day before the test isn't gonna help because like that's why you should have been doing eons ago and like just doing problems right before the test is just not gonna get you anything. So the best way that I would recommend just to make yourself feel more confident and just to have a little bit more like grasp of what your concepts are, just look through the textbook, just go through each chapter. What do I not know? What do I do know about this chapter? And once you have all that down, then you should feel a lot better about yourself. So a common thing that people forget is like moment of inertia, right? You have to remember that a solid sphere is 2 fifths mr squared, or that a spherical shell is 2 thirds mr squared, or maybe a disc is 1 half mr squared. And a new one that came up in last year's FMA was like a square around its axis is m a squared over 6. Other things that you might have to remember, just remember your like momentum equations, your like conservation of energy, remember how buoyancy works, Bernoulli's principle. So just go through the textbook chapter by chapter and make sure you know all the basic concepts in each chapter. Okay, so now we're feeling a lot more confident about ourselves, we have all our equations down, we've done pro plenty of problems beforehand, and now we're ready to take the test. Or are we? No, we first gotta get some good sleep, okay? Kinda underrated, but like, if you get good sleep before the test, you're gonna feel so much better going into the test, I don't know. Is it, is it just, just get a little bit more sleep, it doesn't hurt, right? Like honestly, the best way to do it is if you want to cram, cram two days before. Then the day before, just sleep. There's no reason to cram the day before if you can just cram the day before the day before, right? And also, before you go to sleep, just keep your stuff ready so you're not panicking the day of. Just have your pencil in the pencil case, have your eraser in the pencil case, and have your calculator ready, and you're fine. Now the calculator could be graphing, it could not be graphing, like I'm not... Like, it doesn't specifically say you can't use a graph and calculator, but it just says that you have to clear your memory and clear your functions. Other than that, you're fine if you use a graph and calculator. But honestly, like, a graph and calculator is useless, so if you have a scientific calculator, just bring the scientific calculator to be safe. There's no reason to use a graph and calculator, and honestly, scientific calculator is so much easier to use. Like, I use a TI-36X, which honestly is like, literally graphing calculator stuff packed in a scientific calculator body, but like, it's so much easier to use than my graphing calculator. So now you've gone in your sleep, you've gone in your stuff together, and now you actually are gonna take the test. Now we're on the test taking part. So in terms of time management, right, like FMA is not as time crunchy as AMC, because in AMC, like, you're aiming to do as many of the problems as you can and like look through as many of the problems as you can, and often time people just don't get through all of them. But in the FMA, like, most of the problems are not like the difficulty distribution isn't like we like in AMC. It's more like a little bit more steady. So generally you should aim to at least try all of the problems. And since the difficulty isn't like super like skyrockety like AMC, what you could do is just skip the ones that you have no idea how to do. There's no reason to try on the lower ones because in the higher ones you might just find like questions that you find easier. Like literally for me, I spend more time on 10 through 20 than I do on like, uh, no I spend more time on like 15 to 20 than I do on 20 to 25, it's weird. So the strat is, try a problem and if you don't like get a solution or like at least an idea of a solution within the first like 30 seconds of you looking at it, then move on to the next one. And once you've read like a bunch of problems and you've not been able to solve a certain amount, then you could come back to it and you've basically lost zero time. Because anyway, you're gonna have to go through all the problems, right? So you might as well just solve as many as you can through the first sweep and then come back through it. 
like the way I do it is I just go through it as fast as I can and then come back and check my answers. Honestly, you're more likely to catch your sillies if you go through it again than if you just go through it once slowly. Like, I feel like the reason I make sillies is not because I go too fast, it's because I just make a stupidest decision in my life. And that's why I lose like 600 points. Dude, the reason why I lost like 10 points on last year's Amy is I literally wrote on my paper. 121 plus 1 is guess what? 123! Biggest brain! So I literally have like a t-shirt that says on the back of it the proof for 1 plus 1. And I literally did not remember that. It's... <sighs> but anyways, yeah. So don't make sillies. Just go through it as fast as you can and then go and check your answers. You're more likely to catch sillies that way. Alright, another tip. Don't bash unless you have an idea how to do the solution. Cause there's no point bashing and then just getting nothing. Just writing like 600 words on your paper and that's it. And you don't even get an answer for it, not worth it. So bash if you have an idea how to do it and bash only if you have time to do it. It's better to not bash and not get an answer than to like skip an easier problem that's later on in the test. So that's another thing to consider. All right, one, one strategy, like one, one last strategy that I like to use is when I see multiple choice tests, what I do is I look at the other question answers and see like, why would they put that answer there? Is it because someone would like troll and do this? And then you try to check, oh, did I make that mistake? And if you do that, then you could at least eliminate all the other answer choices. That sounds pretty good about making like pretty epic answer choices that you're not going to be able to determine anything from that, but sometimes it works out. Alrighty, that's it. Good luck, guys. I believe in you. You guys got this. Hopefully these tips were helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want more like tips in general on ASMA. I could do some more for the next one. But overall, that's basically all of my test taking tips for uh, ASMA. Just go in there, chill out. Do your best and you're fine. Alrighty, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.